approach the month of October, which is the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, this facility is not only offering a lifeline to the thousands of Kenyans who are currently struggling with cancer, but also a sense of hope to them, their caregivers and their loved ones. There are many of us in need of this service, and in my view, way too many. Cancer has rapidly advanced into becoming our nation's top killer after infectious and cardiovascular diseases, and it is claiming the lives of our people at an alarming rate. It kills 70% of sufferers in Kenya, which is unfortunate and unacceptable. Fellow Kenyans, as I stand before you today, it is highly unlikely that there is a single Kenyan watching this briefing who has not felt the impact of cancer and its ever so painful sting, both economically and health-wise. We have buried family members who suffered and unfortunately died from a certain kind of cancer, developed, may it be for genetic reasons, and bid farewell to friends whose fate was tied to, life cycle choice, to lifestyle choices. We are more often than not saying goodbye to loved ones who have died from chemicals caused by environmental exposures or even perhaps hazardous agricultural practices. It concerns this government deeply that on an annual basis we register an approximate 50,000 new cases of cancers annually. And sadly, as I've said before, we end up losing 70% of those afflicted. That is 35,000 deaths every year, 35,000 believed families, and to add insult to horrible injury, most likely 35,000 bankruptcies. When I mentioned the word hope, I did so with those individuals in mind. A, sig a significant number of them pass on as a result of infrastructural and resource limitations we have had in the healthcare sector. Tragically, the vast majority perish because their cancers are diagnosed when they are at an advanced stage, too late for curative treatment. The high cost of treatment locally is also another limiting factor whose forces may seek help in foreign countries where there is specialized care. Whatever the choices Kenyans make, the burden on their pockets is simply overwhelming and it must be mitigated. The facility coming up behind this building, the Integrated Molecular Imaging Center, or as I call it, the Center of Hope, is on the verge of revolutionizing this by offering our people a fully comprehensive hospital with prevention, screening, diagnostics, treatment, survivorship, and palliative care services. It will house a psychotron machine whose key function is to produce radioisotopes, all in layman's language, the consumables that are used for early diagnosis, a PET radio pharmacy system which radiates the radioisotopes for the imaging and the coverted PET, PET CT scanning machines. Combine those with an MRI unit, a CT256 slice unit, and the national capacity to supply counties with radioisotopes that can serve a minimum of 15 patients daily, and our oncological struggles are already drastically reduced. Gone will be the days when our sick people were forced on a tiresome journey to Nairobi in search of medical care. Also gone will be the days when Kenyans were compelled to spend in, ex in excess of 8 billion shillings annually seeking cancer treatment in such countries as India, Thailand, South Africa, Dubai, and elsewhere. 
And best of all, gone will be the days when our loved ones perished because of poor screening, misdiagnosis, or inaccessibility to treatment. Cancer will no longer be an automatic death sentence. Neither will it be a disease that bankrupts families and erases years of hard work. Fellow Kenyans, since our governors are still here, it is worth mentioning the critical role that our counties play in the provision of universal health coverage and in doing so, make a public appeal to each one of them to take full advantage of the mechanisms we have in place here. This includes, at the policy level, where we are making strides to harmonize the guidelines and legislation of healthcare with our new national cancer control strategy and the provision of health services. Healthcare being a devout function that rests on the county. It is incumbent upon all our governors to ensure that their governments embrace cost-effective strategies that utilize their locations from the national government in the manner where the citizens and their well-being take counter stage, one of those investments being what we discussed here today. And I really want to thank you, Your Excellencies, for the pledges you have made today in this regard. With your word, I am assured that we will tighten our mapping, enhance our prevention services, and reverse the increasing incidence of breasts, cervical, isophageal, prostate, or leukemia cancers that are consuming our people. As COVID-19 has shown us, we have the capacity to prevent, mitigate, and cope with challenges.